This week on the Light Apex, we preview iRacing's Daytona 24 hours, and we ask, is sim racing affordable? Hello and welcome. It's the second episode of the year. I am Tim Cox and as always joined by Sam Fitzpatrick. And of course, coming to the end of January, Daytona 24 hours endurance event, the first of the special events on iRacing and the first time that we're going to see the LMDH into a competitive event, well, it's competitive special event, Sam. Exactly, we've got the uh, BMW taking part for the first time. And this is always an absolutely massive uh, race, it's Tim. It's, it's the biggest uh, special event on iRacing. It's probably the, the most uh, highest participation endurance event in all of sim. I think last year we had 85 splits uh, taking part wow. in the event. I think it was 15,000 drivers. And it's probably only going to be bigger because, as you are saying, the LMDH is now a part bringing the race back up into three classes for this season, Tim. The issue the driver's going to face is managing that battery level because there's although there's big braking zones at Daytona, there's not really enough of them to help recuperate you know the amount that you're going to be at full throttle and deploying your kinetic energy uh in the p2 class apex racing team are the defending champions uh with a fantastic win last year over a couple of the kawanda cars it was just 10 seconds in the end at the line uh fire are defending the gt3 title as well but of course like I said, there's going to be a lot of teams moving to the LMDH and it could potentially make it so that we've got the top drivers spread across the three classes rather than all concentrated in that P2 class or the GT3s. But, 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 as we've covered previously on the late Apex, you hate this event. Yeah, it's rubbish. And I have decided to create 24 reasons why the Daytona 24 hours is a poor event and Tim you, you, for some reason you disagree with a few of them um I, I I don't I don't see where any fault could possibly lie in my logic it's a great spectacle those you know go to watch it in real life they've got a great view across the circuit where yes it's flat which some people might argue but then so other great racing circuits silverstone flat monza pretty much flat those two circuits have other good elements to them daytona's got nothing daytona has so many faults for so many of the corners you got the bus stop i will concede the bus stop is a good corner but pretty much apart from that some of the corners just need to get rid of they could redesign them it would be fantastic and yeah bring in some elevation change put a jump down the the pit straight I'm well up for it, Tim. I mean, I'm all, I'm all for ideas, honestly. Oh. So if Daytona want to take that idea, go ahead, guys. Uh, it's 18 hours too long. We've already s decided that Watkins Glen six hours, you agreed with me on this, Tim, is the best special event. Why, why have it 24 hours? Let's cut down those 18 wow. hours. We can all have a nice dinner on the Saturday night and we don't have to drive through the night. It just works. It's a wide track. There's plenty of lines through numerous corners. You can get your overtakes done. It's good for multi-class racing, period. It's not. Um, there's many corners where you can't do multi-class racing, turn one, awful for multi-class racing. Uh, the fast uh, left-hander, so turn four, again, awful for multi-class racing as well. Turn five, pretty bad. It's too narrow for multi-class racing. The bus stop is very bad for multi-class racing. And also, there's too many classes, Tim. I liked it when there were just two classes. 30 car fields. It's all good. 20 car fields, there's not enough opposition. Especially for the GT3s, it gives them extra opportunities to overtake because they've got the LMP2s, but then also they've got the LMDHs to work with and manoeuvre around and make gains on their opponents. I don't think the GT3s 12 hours into the race as well are going to be thinking, oh, I, I, I love these <laughs> LMDH cars. What, what a fantastic well, addition. Uh, I, I love these guys racing past me and dive bombing me every other corner. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm, honestly, Tim, I don't think they're going to be thinking that. I think they're going to be no. thinking, I wish I, this I will was see that one. That is one I of the perennial that... issues within <laughs> okay. the in-game comms. GT3 drivers hate 
proto drivers, prototype drivers, period. You hear everyone time moving things on and controversial or at least thought provoking comments coming out of Japan. Because Nori Yamochi, Gran Turismo's creator, asking the question, or well, making a statement really more than asking a question, Sam, is sim racing accessible? We're kind of trying to think. Well, how much does it cost? And we kind of came up with the idea that if you've already got a gaming console, it's about 200 quid in order to get ready. You know, 30 quid for a game, 170 quid for a basic set of wheels or pedals. Is that all right? I mean, is that too high a level for someone to even like dip their toe into it? Or actually, is that sort of reasonable compared to, you know, other hobbies that you're going to take up? I suppose ultimately as well, it's what you want to use it for. Because if you just want to mess about with your mates on, I don't know, Forza Horizon, then yes, it's not the best quality equipment, but it'll do. It'll more than do you and get you up and rolling. In terms of games, you can pick them up for £30 used. Quite often, you know, especially at this point in the year, the sales on. So if you look at well, most sim race, sim racing, more simcade. Realistically, you're looking at the F1 22 game, and a set of course of competizione. Probably, I'd say. I'm not totally convinced by the argument that some people say that. Well, sim racing is cheaper than real life, and so I, I think that's like the i racing attitude that well. It's cheaper than if you're going to race in real life, and this is like the equivalent of it, so it's very good value for money. I, I still think it needs to be cheaper than that, but I still think that Yamochi has sort of missed the point slightly in terms of to get entry started. Well, because he was talking, saying, you know, you need a high end PC, you need this, you need that. Well, ultimately, if you just, even with iRacing, if you just want to do ovals, then you don't need load cell brake pedals because it's very rare that you brake. You know, look at the top performers within the e NASCAR series. Nothing, nothing special equipment wise. And that's an important point in terms of, I think uh, in particular when it comes to F1 esports, a lot of guys have been able to qualify for um, F1 esports despite yeah having a very basic setup. And so the fact that esports, the high level of Esports is accessible even to those people with just a uh, 200 quid setup. Does it, it is absolutely crucial because it means that everyone has opportunities for that. But Sam, on that bombshell, I think that's probably a good time to end that segment and move across into the rundown of what's been happening this week within the sim racing world. Let's kick things off with Rensport. Uh, they've shared a new teaser trailer previewing thing, their up-and-coming series with ESL. The video confirmed the addition of the Mercedes AMG to the GC3 roster, although further information, including the teams and drivers involved, is expected to be released on the 23rd of January. iRacing have hinted the Formula Ford car is joining the sim. An early render was shared on iRacing's Twitter account indicating that it could arrive as early as the 2023 Season 2 build in March. And Cosworth, they've launched their own steering wheel in partnership with Belgian pro-grade equipment producer Simtag. The CCW Mark II Pro Sim steering wheel is based on its real-life namesake but I think that's a good time to move across now because we're going to head into a quick break. We're back on the other side where the Apex Racing drivers will be asked some intriguing and funny either or questions. We'll see you shortly.
Oh, Messi. 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 Yeah, Ronaldo. Uh, Messi. 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 Uh, Messi. Ronaldo. Messi. Messi. Mmm, I'm gonna miss you. Attacking. Defending. Attacking. 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 Uh, defending. Defending. Hands on the track, but I'd rather attack. It's more fun. Defending. Attacking. Attacking. Probably depends on the scenario, but I'll say defending because it means I'm in front. Cats. Dogs. Dogs. Cats. Dog. Dogs. 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 Meow. Start the car. Take over because I'm not good at rolling starts. Start the car. Start the car. Start. Start. Take yeah. over. Take over. Start. Um, my performance starting the car has not been that great recently, so take over. <laughs> Endurance. Sprint. Sprint. Endurance. Uh, sprint. 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 Endurance. Endurance. Sprint. Sprint. F1. Uh, I have to say F1. 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 F1, I guess. Probably IndyCar recently. F1. F1. IndyCar. IndyCar. Uh, oversteer. Oversteer. Understeer. No, oversteer. Oversteer. Understeer. Oversteer. 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 Understeer. Oversteer. All the way. Oversteer. Understeer because I'm a lazy driver. I don't like having to work hard behind the wheel. Pasta. Pasta. Uh, pasta. Pizza. As a guilty pleasure, I prefer pizza. Pizza. Yeah, pizza. 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 Rear wheel. Rear wheel. Rear wheel drive, really. Uh, front wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. Rear. Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. Rear. Front rear drive. Rear wheel drive. That's a terrible question. Films. Uh, films. TV. Films. 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 TV. Films. 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 TV. Standing. 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 Rolling start. Standing. 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 Uh, standing start. Holding. Standing. Standing start. Standing start. Standing. Start. standing. Hamilton. Uh, today, Verstappen. Hamilton. Verstappen. Verstappen. Uh, Hamilton. 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 Verstappen. Verstappen. Oh, they're both absolutely terrible. I hate them both. Daytona 24. Yeah, Daytona 24. Uh, well, since we've already won Daytona, Spa 24 now. Or oh, Daytona. Daytona 24. Daytona 24. Just for you. Spa. Spa 24. Daytona 24. Daytona. Spa 24. Daytona 24. Well, we've won Daytona, so it's a spa. Excellent stuff. There you go. Bye. Well, let's take a look ahead at the week here on Apex Racing TV. And my pick of the bunch, Sam, is the Riptech World Challenge. And the reason behind that, LMDH, GT3, 75 minute races across seven rounds of American broadcast. So obviously stateside, you're all good, east or west coast. And also it's on iRacing. I think they can even still sign up for the series potentially, can't they Sam too? Yeah, they go to uh, XMS Racing, then to uh, get sign up details over there. And you can see, yeah, the seven rounds which are coming up. Round one is Daytona, so fantastic preparation, Tim for the 24 hours coming up just a few days later. And uh, we'll be one of our first series, Tim, on the channel. So you have the LMDH cars on that. I mean, obviously it came out just before Christmas and so yes, not many series right. really have adopted it so far. So that LMDH GT3 bats thing, that will give us an idea of what these IMSA events are gonna be like for the foreseeable future. 
But that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks very much for joining us. I've been Tim Cox with Sam Fitzpatrick, and we'll see you in a week's time on The Late Apex. Thank you.